Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to be covering plant structure. And these are the learning targets that you need to be familiar with by the end of today's video. So just a quick recap, um, plants are organisms that undergo both photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Photosynthesis is a process where plants take in solar energy and they convert it to stored chemical energy, which is in the form of a glucose sugar molecule. So um, just, as, just looking at the photosynthesis equation, you'll notice that plants need several things to survive. They need carbon dioxide, which they get from the atmosphere, water, which they absorb through their roots, and of course, sunlight absorbed through the leaves. Uh, and they use these reactants um, in order to create sugar, and oxygen products, sugar, which they will use as food and oxygen, which lucky for us is released into the atmosphere in order to help us stay alive. Of course, um, plants also undergo cellular respiration. So the glucose that they created um, during photosynthesis gets broken down and converted into ATP during cellular respiration. And this is very important because uh, plant cells need this ATP in order to carry out day-to-day -day normal processes. So this is why plants have to do both, photosynthesis to make their food or to make the glucose and then cellular respiration to break down the food and to release the ATP energy molecules. So as I go through today's lesson, I want you to keep this um, big idea in mind. I want you to continuously ask yourself, how is the structure that we're gonna be discussing, how is it related to its function? And I'm going to go through different structures or different common structures found in plant cells. The first one is, of course, the leaves, right? So when we think of a plant right away, the main characteristic is going to be the leaves. Of course, not all plants have leaves. Um, plants such as mosses and ferns do not have any true leaves, but most do. And of course, leaves come in different sizes and shapes. Um, leaves are usually, though, they're large in size and broad, which means that they are wide, okay? And if we take a look at the structure of a leaf, it makes sense because the larger uh, or the wider something is, uh, the more surface area it has, okay? So by increasing the surface area of a leaf, you are increasing the amount of space or you are maximizing the amount of space available to conduct photosynthesis because you are uh, increasing surface area for absorbing more sunlight. So leaves are usually large and broad to increase surface area to absorb more sunlight. In addition, a lot of leaves are usually covered with a waxy cuticle, which is just an outer coating. So notice how this leaf right here looks kind of shiny. Um, so the reason why it has this shiny hue to it is because it contains a waxy coating. And wax is a non-polar substance, which means that it does not allow water, which is a polar substance, to pass through. Uh, this makes a lot of sense because a plant, for a plant, water is super important. Okay, I'm sorry, that was annoying. Um, but basically, uh, the reason why waxy cuticles are important to have on the leaves is to prevent water loss. Since wax is nonpolar, it prevents the polar water particles from escaping or too much water particles from escaping. And that makes a lot of sense because plants need to hold on to as much water as possible to use it as a reactant for photosynthesis. Um, another thing that is very common about the leaf structure is that it contains high amounts of chloroplast, which makes sense because the more chloroplasts you have, the more photosynthesis that can take place. So now you have um, a lot of chloroplasts found in this uh, leaf, which can absorb a lot of sunlight because it's very large and broad and has very high amounts of surface area. And the chloroplast is then going to use the sunlight to make as much sugar as possible. Um, in addition, leaves contain structures called stomatas and guard cells. And these structures we cannot see with our naked eye. They will be visible underneath the microscope, but they look something like this. So notice that um, um, the stomata is essentially a tiny little hole or pore on the surface of the leaf that can be viewed underneath a microscope. Around this hole or stomata, okay, um, are these two structures known as the guard cells. So you'll notice the guard cells here are shown in pink. And just like their name suggests, the guard cells guard the stomata or they guard this opening. And just like a gate, 
they open it and close it, depending on the situation or the time of day. So during the daylight, when there's sunlight around, um, the stomatas will open and the plant will take in carbon dioxide gas, which is a reactant to photosynthesis, and it will release oxygen uh, and water vapor, depending on you know, how much water it has. Uh, and oxygen, of course, is a product of photosynthesis. At night, when there isn't any light around, the plant will take in oxygen, which is a reactant of cellular respiration, and it will release carbon dioxide, which is a product of cellular respiration. And that's why sometimes people will tell you, do not sleep in a room with too many plants, because essentially what happens at night is that these plants are gonna release high amounts of carbon dioxide. And of course, this lowers the quality of the air. So that's why it's not advisable to, to sleep in a closed room with too many plants. All right, now these gases, carbon dioxide, water, oxygen, they are moving in and out of this hole or stomata, but they're not just a move, a moving in and out randomly. They are moving by a specific transport mechanism, which we've discussed before. So let's look at this gray box here. By which process do these gases move in and out of the leaves? So I want you kind of to circle back to what we discussed when we were talking about transport mechanisms and ask yourself which process allows gases to move in and out from high to low concentrations and the answer should be diffusion right so the gases carbon dioxide water and oxygen are able to move in and out of the plant leaf by the process of diffusion um now you know when you're kind of like uh, it's super hot outside and you know you're kind of walking and you start noticing your body doing something right you start to sweat so just like humans sweat when they're feeling too hot or they have um you know in order to cool off basically your body starts to produce sweat to regulate your body temperature plants also sweat Okay, but we don't call it sweating because that's not fancy enough. So instead, plant sweating is essentially known as transpiration. And transpiration is defined as the loss of water vapor. So when there's too much water in a plant cell, or the plant is trying to kind of cool itself off, it will lose some of this water in a gas form um, as water vapor. And this water vapor is going to escape through the um, stomata or the opening. All right, so we kind of already talked about the stomata. We said that there are these holes or pores inside the plant leaves, and they are surrounded by guard cells. And we already said that guard cells open and close, and they kind of um, regulate the opening and closing of the stomata. But the question is, how do they do that? How are guard cells able to open and close um, and control the, uh, you know, the size of the stomata? Well, it really all depends on water pressure and the process of osmosis. So when the plant has taken in enough water, it has enough water inside of it, um, the, there's, the water pressure inside the plant cells, specifically inside, inside of these guard cells, is going to increase. So when there's high amounts of water inside the plant, the water pressure is increased inside the guard cells. And the guard cells start to swell up like a balloon. They start to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And they essentially push open. So notice how here the guard cells are really nice and swelled, just like a balloon that's filled up with water. They push the stomata open. Okay. And obviously this water is moving by the process of osmosis. When the, when the plant hasn't gotten enough water, there's low amounts of water in the plant, water pressure is going to decrease. Notice how the guard cells here look a lot smaller than here because they filled up with less water. The vacuole, okay, this little organelle that we've talked about before, has less water inside of it. And so um, it's filled up with less water, which means that there is less water pressure and the guard cells close just like an inflated balloon. So the stomata also closes. So this really depends on the opening and the closing of the guard cells really depends on the amount of water available. And this makes so much sense, right? Because if the plant doesn't have enough water to begin with, it's gonna close its stomata to prevent more water from evaporating. It wants to conserve as much water as possible. 
Okay, so moving on from the leaves, we're going to now talk about the roots. And again, we want to talk about how structure is related to function. For plant roots, most plant roots are going to have these kind of like branched structure to it. And they're highly branched in order to increase surface area to absorb more water. Okay, so the more surface, the more branches you have, the more surface area you have, which means that the plant can absorb more water. And this is going to be used as a reactant of photosynthesis. Again, let's think about how this water is able to move from the soil into the roots. Which process, which transport mechanism moves water from an area of high concentration in the soil to an area of low concentration in the roots? And the answer should be osmosis. Water moves into the roots by the process of uh, osmosis. In addition to taking in um, water, Roots also anchor plants to the ground. They keep them in place. And they also have certain, sometimes they will have certain uh, chemicals, enzymes that protect the plant from harmful bacteria and fungi. All right, so the last part of the plant that I wanna talk about is stems. And of course, uh, most plants will have stems. And again, the length or the size of the stem will depend on the plant. The main point of having a stem is to provide it with some form of a transport system that is going to carry the water and the nutrients around the plant. Okay, so uh, stems contain something known as a vascular tissue. Specifically, they contain two types of vascular tissue which is the xylem and the phloem. And I'm not gonna talk about these too much today because we're gonna be discussing them in more details in our next video. But essentially, think of the stem as having two main highways or straws that move uh, either nutrients or water around the plant. Keep in mind, these um, in these gray and green boxes, uh, notice that the stems carry different reactants or products for different um, for, for, for the different um, processes that are happening inside of the plant. Um, so the stem will carry sugar that is actually made in um, photosynthesis and is going to be used in cellular respiration. And it also carries water, which is going to be the reactant of photosynthesis. Um, this is a cross section of a stem. Notice that it has, see how it has these tiny little tubes everywhere. So if we, if we kind of cut open, cut, cut open a stem and we put it underneath a microscope, it will be filled with these tiny little tubes that are carrying either water or um, sugar and nutrients. And that's it for today. I'll see you guys in the next video.